It's Mindset Monday, coming at you with energetic and tactical tips to help you level up your life and your week. Let's get it. Hello, friends. Welcome to today's episode of the Corporate Dropout Podcast. Today is part two of my interview with my personal hypnotherapist, Kelsey Padigos. Kelsey is an entrepreneur, transformation coach, certified hypnotherapist, and host of the Confidence Company podcast. And today, we are specifically talking about how to reconcile your belief in God, specifically if you have Christian faith, although this could extend to any other belief as well, with belief and use of law of attraction and manifestation. So this is definitely a different type of episode than we normally do, but one that I think is quite important based on a conversation that Kelsey and I had recently. So Kelsey, thank you for agreeing to do a part two. Can't wait to to get into this. <laughs> yes, I'm excited. So it was after one of our recent sessions, we were talking about law of attraction, reconciling this with God, because I have a number of friends who are of Christian faith, and they feel like these things are at odds with each other. And when I shared that with you, what you replied with blew me away. So if you remember what you told me, <laughs> can you share that again? <laughs> what did I tell you? That they were one in the same. Yeah, they are one in the same. They are one in the same. To me, God is manifestation. And, you know, I... it. There's a long story here as to how I came to this peaceful place um, and knowing inside of me. And I think it's something that all of us get to uniquely discover within ourselves because you have to know it for you, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, But there are a lot of tools that we have now, a lot of information and knowledge, um, even on a scientific level, like through neuroscience and quantum physics. And when you put it all together, it just, it it all fits together. It all makes sense. And when you bring in the Bible, I, to be honest, I don't read my Bible like all the time. (laughs) I'm pretty bad about it too. (laughs) Yeah. I'm not like highly, um, um, like educated with the Bible, but I, I have read it, right? And it's all based on our own interpretations. But the word abundance alone is stated 71 times in the Bible. And there are a lot of scriptures um, about prosperity and abundance and that God wants that for you. Okay. So I think that, that what happens is there's some human conditioning that gets in the way of us knowing that, right? What was, I'm curious what your experience was growing up. Like, how did you come to your like mindset with money and God? Uh, Well, I'll start first with the money piece. So I'm first generation American dad immigrated from Italy at 14 on the other side of the family, long line of Iowa farmers. So, you know, these are all people who have worked very, very hard to have money, always exchanging time for money. And because time is scarce, often money is scarce, right? And so I always grew up thinking that if you were going to have any level of money, like like a lot of it, it meant that you probably had, you know, screwed someone over or done something, you know, less than ideal. Like it, I didn't hear about people with wealth being talked about in a positive light. So that's that side of it. The belief in God thing, I've always believed in God, although I stayed away from him for quite a while. And it was Christians keeping me from Christ. I heard John Gordon put it that way mm-hmm. on a podcast once and he nailed it. So I was 13 years old. And at the time, there was some proposition on the ballot in California, and it was to ban gay marriage. And there was a sign in favor of banning gay marriage in the yard of this friend's house that I was at. And so I'm young. I don't know. I I might have not even been 13 yet. So I said, oh, hey, you know, what's that sign about? And they said, oh, you know, it's voting against people being able, like gay people being able to get married. And I was like, well, who cares if they can? You know, they love each other. 
And oh my God, let's just say that was the last time I was ever at that house. It was like, mm-hmm. like, such, you know, th- this was a very religious family and, you know, they're not, they're nice, well-meaning people, I, I think, but, um, it was their response to me thinking that people should just be able to love who they love that I'm like, well, I don't want anything to do with organized religion. So then fast forward, I'm giving you the Cliff's notes version here, but fast forward a few more years. And my uncle who was very, very dear to me is sick with cancer. And I was at his bedside with my family when he passed away. And we were saying, we were all holding hands saying that our father together And when he passed away, I mean, this is going to sound crazy to people if they haven't experienced this or they don't believe, but I literally felt God come in and, and take him and, Mm. but in, in a positive way though, like in a, like a warm, tender embrace, like he was going home type of feeling. And it was at that moment I was like, okay, this is for real. And I need to stop denying it. Because, you know, maybe I feel like it's inconvenient or whatever. I need to embrace this. And so I was living at Chicago or living in Chicago at the time. Um, and I went back home to Chicago and I went and got confirmed. So I grew up Catholic, kind of. That was mm-hmm. the thing that, you know, resonated with me. And, you know, this may upset some people listening to it. And if it does, you know, that's not my intent to offend you. But I'm kind of like an all roads lead to Rome sort of gal. Like, if you identify with being Catholic and you love the ritual of that, like, that's great. If you know, you're evangelical and you like that. Awesome. If you're this part might offend some people that are listening, but if you are, you know, Hindu or Buddhist, like I really don't care. I think all roads lead to Rome and you should believe what you believe. And, um, anyway, that's my long answer. I'm supposed to be interviewing you, but here I am (laughs) spilling my guts. (laughs) It helps me understand where your audience is too. So this is good. So, okay. (sighs) I totally agree with that. And you know what? You know how in our last episode, we talked about how like kids absorb energy. Yeah. Right. And when you were a kid, like imagine when you were a kid, you, there were things that just didn't feel right to you. Mm -hmm. And I'm what they call like an old soul. I've always been like, me too, like really wise. Right. And (laughs) on beyond your years. And some of it has to do with trauma. Some of it has to do with you being an old soul. And as a kid, like church did not feel good to me. I really didn't like going to church. And a part of me really rejected Jesus as a child because there were things that I experienced that allowed me to get, go to that conclusion. I was like, how could God allow that? Why are these Christians, so-called Christians judging people mm-hmm. and shaming people? Yeah. Uh, you know, I didn't know what shaming was when I kid, as a kid, but judging people, I certainly did. Why, you know, why do they talk about people and argue with each other and, and feel so hateful towards each other? But then, you know, on Sundays, you know, it's this way. But then you're going to judge people for not being a certain way or not believe, like all of that did not feel good to me. Yep. Oh, God, and I resonate then, with this so much. Yeah. And then I, I remember questioning my mom because she told me something about how in the Bible, I asked her, like, why aren't there any women like pastors? Right. They're all men. And she was like, well, in the Bible, it says this, this and this. And I was like, what? Like, that doesn't feel right to me. Like, if I wanted, like, if I'm a child of God and if I want to do that, like, why wouldn't he want me to do that? You know? Yeah. Right. And so, yeah, there were just all these things. And um, the last thing that didn't sit right with me that's coming to my mind is all the different religions of the world. I'm like, how could, what if it's not accessible to them? Right. What if in India, they don't know about Jesus because it's kind of like a U.S. thing, right? What if they don't ever get to know about it? And so then they're just like not saved and they're going to go to hell. That never so, sat with me either. Yeah. So then, okay, let's fast forward. So then I grew up, you know, I got, I moved out of the house. I didn't have to go to church anymore. I didn't go to church. I was like, thank goodness. I don't have to go anymore. <laughs> But there is a part of me that was still like wanting something that wanted 
a connection that wanted God, but I was super resentful of God. Because of how it had been presented to you. And like the 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 fire and brimstone, everyone is a sinner type of context, right? Oh, yeah. That's another thing that doesn't sit right with me. Like the we're born sinners, which I totally get. I get it. But that immediately puts us into a state of shame. And I'm going to talk about yes. that later. Yes, yes. I think that is completely taking us away from the divinity that we truly are and that we came here to embody and um, the, how we were intended to live our life. Yeah, so, I can agree more. Yeah. So then, um, you know, I started listening to Oprah at the time and <laughs> she had a podcast and she started talking about spirituality. It's just like, if you are learning how to cultivate a spiritual practice, like you just start with what follow peace, like what brings you peace. And so I started doing that and, you know, started just having a morning routine and making tea, like having my opening the curtains, just like inviting peace into my life. So, and it just continued from there, right. Um, found meditations, journaling, and then hypnotherapy. And when with hypnotherapy, that's when I started peeling back the, all the layers of conditioning that I learned through my human experience and peeling back the layers of pain, of judgment, of trauma. And I look at this as like an onion, right? We have all these layers. And as you peel them back, what you're getting to is the true you that you have been protecting through putting these layers on in your life, right? All these layers are just a way to protect the true self, the divine self, because you learned that that wasn't okay. So I'm peeling back these layers. I'm feeling more and more like, whoa, like this is who I am, right? This is who I get to be. I'm, I'm not this pain. Like I have love inside of me. Like I'm actually experiencing self-love for the first time. And, you know, we talked last time about going through one of the hardest times, um, going through depression, like not knowing who I am and why I'm here. And I, you know, I had all the things, right. I got married. I had kids. I had a business. I had a master's degree. I bought a house. Like I did all the things I set out to do and I was still unhappy and I was still, I felt lonely still. So that hole was never filled by these external things. So I was like, oh crap, like I gotta, I gotta work on this spiritual thing. I really didn't want to. <laughs> and every like millionaire, right? All my millionaire mentors out there, all of them said, you have to have a spiritual connection. You have yeah. to, it's yeah. imperative. And that was the one piece where I was like, I really don't want to do it. Like there's just so much pain there. Um, but peeling back the layers there, and this is the session I told you about the most miraculous, like 10 minute session of my life. It was so short and this hypnotherapist was guiding me through a session where he was just guiding me down a path, right? In my mind, my, my eyes are closed. It was all happening in imagery and guiding me down a path to something important. So something of significance is going to appear in your path. And this cabin appeared. And when I opened the cabin, Jesus was inside. And I had never experienced this love before. Like it was the most pure love, like unconditional love. And it that changed my life because I, I was like, whoa, I was not expecting Jesus to appear. I used to reject Jesus. I didn't know how to have a relationship with him. But now he's like, I felt what it felt like to be connected to him. And once you have that first connection in anything, right, in hypnotherapy, your subconscious mind knows how to go there again. It's like, oh, yes, we want more of this. This felt really good. <laughs> um, and so I also love neuroscience and quantum physics and energetic vibrations and um so we're always emitting a frequency, right? A frequency we cannot see, but we are energetic beings, right? Always emitting an energetic frequency and our emotions emit a frequency. And this is the frequency 
that is playing in the law of attraction, right? Mm -hmm. And your subconscious mind is your antenna. So whatever is in your subconscious programming is setting out a broadcast signal, right? Like a radio broadcast signal, right? And it's like, okay, this is what we believe in. This is the frequency we're setting out. And so this is what you're going to attract. So this is all coming together, I promise. (laughs) No, this is great. I'm here for it. (laughs) Okay. So when studying the frequency scales, I encourage everyone to go look at this scale. This, so our emotions give off a certain vibration and the bottom, you know, is death, right? There's like no emotion emitting from our bodies. So that's Mm -hmm. zero. The next frequency is shame, which is 20. So shame is one above death. Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. Okay. So keep that in mind for later discussion. (laughs) Shame is right above death. So let's look at the state of the world right now. And all the shame that's being thrown at each other. Yeah. Wow. So who's participating in that? And I don't care what side you're on. Yeah. I was participating in one side at one time because of fear. Yeah. Right. And then I realized what I was doing. I was like, whoa, like this is very low vibration. Like this doesn't And this is not where we um, conduct change. So um, very interesting. So my belief is most of the world is in a frequency of shame. Like there's shame. We carry shame in our bodies and um, our ego will come in to protect that shame because it's so painful to look at. It is so painful. So, um, okay. So then... The very, the, the highest frequency you can feel is love, right? So then I was like, well, that's what I experienced in my hypnotherapy session, right? I'm like, now I get it. Like Jesus is love. Jesus is the frequency of love. Jesus does not exist in shame. Jesus exists in the frequency, the quantum field of love. Okay. So then it all started making sense to me about like, religion and the shaming that takes place in religion. And I was like, yeah, that's not Jesus. And the more I learned about Jesus and yeah, I love that quote about what you said earlier. Don't let Christians keep you from Christ. Yes. (laughs) Yes. And yeah, my church, someone said, um, like, don't let religion blind you Mm -hmm. because we can get really caught up in how it's the surface, right? And the well, I'm doing this and you're not doing that. So then you're not good and I'm good. Well, right. no, that's not in the frequency of love. No, that's not Jesus. So <laughs> what I learned from studying Jesus alone, like who he was as a person, was like he loved everyone. Mm-hmm. He absolutely loved it. And he got reprimanded for that. He did. He got shamed for being friends or like connecting to prostitutes or connecting to people that were like outcasts of the society. Right. Lepers and all of it. Yeah. Jesus alone fascinates me. And he is my healer in my hypnotherapy session. I would not believe in Jesus if it weren't for hypnotherapy. And I truly believe it's a disservice for any Christian because I know a lot of Christians who have not had a personal relationship with God or Jesus, because there's so much conditioning that you're not aware of. Mm -hmm. That's closing your heart on that love on the frequency of love. Oh, totally. So is this why you think it's one and the same? Because when you're at a high vibration, leveraging the law of attraction to bring good things into your life and manifest good things, you are at that vibrational frequency of love, right? Like you're relinquishing your commitment to outcomes. You're relinquishing control. You know that everything is flowing. Everything's abundant. Is is that why you think that these are essentially one and the same? Yes. And the Bible talks, it has scriptures about abundance and manifestation and the mind. Mm. So what's interesting to me is after everything, after learning a lot about the subconscious mind, not from the Bible, right? 
and being in my studies and and um, learning about manifestation. And I, I and after naming my company, the Confidence Company podcast or the Confidence Company, when I named it that, I was not confident. But God <laughs> gave me that name. He was like, "You're gonna name it this." And then I I was reading the Bible. And I was so fascinated. I was like, oh my gosh, like talking about manifestation. This is talking about abundance. It's talking about prosperity. Like, wow, it was blowing my mind (laughs) because before my lens that I was looking at the Bible through was that God was here to punish me. Like I was in trouble. Yep. Yep. I I think so many of us grew up that way, right? Right. And I was to fear God. And when you've experienced trauma and you've actually experienced fear in your body, and then you hear people telling you to fear God. Right. I'm like, I don't want anything to do with God. (laughs) That does not feel good to me. I'm scared. Yep. Right. So then I read this scripture. I forget. I think it's in Corinthians, but it was about finding your confidence in Jesus. Oh, wow. And I just had this moment where it's like, that's why he named it that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That gives me chills. Mm -hmm. I believe that with my work, I'm peeling back the layers. I'm helping you peel back the layers of human conditioning to get you back to the abundant being that God created you to be. Okay. I don't believe that God created this earth and all of us, right? He spends so much time creating all of us. Um, the chances or the probability of us being born is one in 400 trillion. (laughs) You are a miracle. You are a gift. And I don't believe that he created us to live in shame. I don't think he created us to struggle and, um, live paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. Because Uh, he's a freak of love. (laughs) Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So we've forgotten We have forgotten our power. We have forgotten the authority that lives in us. Okay. And this is what blew my mind too. When I was connecting the dots of like, okay, God isn't something outside of me. No, he lives inside of you. He's in all the cells of your being because you are a child of God. And when you're a child of someone, you have their DNA. Yes. We have the DNA of God and we are, we are innately creators. We, that's why we're here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurs. We, we're here to create. We want to create in our business and we want to create transformation. We, we're here to create because that's what we're born to do. And with manifestation, that's where you get to partner with God and learn how to believe and trust in this higher being who is infinite intelligence. I love that phrase, infinite intelligence. Like really let that sink in. Like stop trying to do it all. You don't have to. You don't have to know how to do everything. You don't have to be everything. That was old me. That's, you know, the super women, super woman syndrome that would come out. Yeah. And then I would shame myself for not being able to do it all. You're not meant to. Right. And God is here to co-create with you. Ah, I love that. Do you think also knowing how the law of attraction works and that we are all made of the same stuff, right? Like everything in the universe is made of the same stuff, just in different combination, different form. Do you feel like that also is part of why we are, we have God within us? Yeah, we um, all have the same, we're all, we all have the same type of minds, right? We we don't have the same mind, but the way we're designed is the same. And then, you know, we all have our life experiences. (laughs) But the thing is like, what we forget is that we have a choice. Yes. Because we have free will. Right. And so one of the things that I had to heal with um, and learn how to have authority in, and I have this amazing church where they teach you how to have the authority of God in you and how to use it. Oh, Yeah. It's amazing. I'm like, where have they been all my life? It's like, I just, I can feel the Holy spirit. When I walk in, like, I just want to go into the Holy spirit. Like it just feels so good. But, um, what people don't realize is that they have authority and a lot of like the generational programming, right. Of your subconscious. That's what we call it. Subconscious programming. Programming gets passed down from generation to generation. So if you've been hearing, you know, content 
or messaging around these generational cycles. And the Bible talks about this too and breaking chains. So one of the, the ones that's hardest to break is victim mentality. That's interesting. One of the first episodes that will air on the show is all about that. Mm -hmm. Because when you're in victim mentality, you're not in your God self. That's what, right? You're not using the power of God. You're not in your authority as a child of God or as a manifester, as a co-creator. You're, you're forgetting. You're completely forgetting who you are and what you're capable of. Yeah. And that you always have a choice. That's so powerful. There was one other thing that you said that this might be a good piece to end on. You told me that you've had a number of clients experience the same thing in their session. I mean, maybe in a slightly different mm-hmm. presentation, but what is it that keeps coming up for people when they are not expecting it under hypnosis? So I love it. I love it so much because he's just like, he's such a good guide in your in your hypnotherapy session. And um, yeah, I've been hearing this in this um, hypnotherapy world and spiritual community that Jesus will just come out of nowhere in people. And these are people who may not even believe, correct? Correct. Yes. That's what blew my mind. Right. And it's just like me, like I wasn't in the place to expect him or believe in him, but he came through and, and that's what other people are experiencing too. And that just, oh, that, that brings like so much hope to me, especially in this, um, climate that we're in because that proves that like someone can experience that type of love instantly without knowing. Yeah. And love is so healing. Like on a scientific level, love heals the energy Mm -hmm. of love heals. So, um, yeah, I love it. People like Jesus, I've heard him coming up in people's Reiki sessions too. Oh, okay. Wait, you were just reminding me of something. I feel like this could be controversial to someone hearing it that's not ready to hear it. But what did you say that Jesus was the ultimate of? Yeah, I said he's the ultimate Reiki master. And (laughs) (laughs) because my wild. Yeah, in my sessions, that's what he does on me. He does Reiki, he like puts his hand over my forehead, or like if I do inner child work, he'll put his hand over my inner child and Mm. like heal her. But when you read the Bible, that's what he's doing. He's touching people and healing them with the power of God. Yeah. But he is a Reiki, like if you want to call it Reiki, whatever, love God that whatever he's healing people with his hands. So to me, he's my Reiki master. Like <laughs> I love the, that. It's so healing <laughs> and it's, it's so magical. So, so for the person that's listening to this, that's maybe they know that there's like this spiritual connection. They're having a hard time accessing it but they know that there's more there. You said, starting with what brings you peace, what other advice would you give to someone who's looking to deepen that spiritual practice and and really tap into that vein of energy? Mm -hmm. So this is great because this is one of the ways that I believe we've been hypnotized as a mass is we've been hypnotized to hate ourselves. Yeah. Women, all the women listening in and men too, but with women, we've been conditioned to not it be in love with our bodies. Yeah. To not and just completely doubt ourselves, right? And and forget our divinity within. Yeah. The divine feminine and all of that. So as we reject ourselves, we're rejecting God because God created you. You are a miracle. So when you're rejecting yourself, you're not seeing the miracle that you are. And like I said, God is within you. He's nothing outside of you. And he wants to have a connection with you, right? You want the frequency of love wants to be in you. So um, I would start with self-love. I would start with peeling back the layers of um, any type of self-negative talk, self-criticism, start rewiring that process. So everything that you say out loud you're confirming, right? And that's also in the Bible, the power of your word. That's why affirmations are so important, right? Positive affirmations. Right. And everything you're saying after I am is creating your reality and it, you're either creating life or you're creating death with your words. So your words also carry frequency and are also playing a role in the law of 
manifestation. So um, I would begin with self-talk. So my favorite book that I always refer people to is Mirror Work by Louise Hay. Mm. And for anyone who doesn't know her work, she cured herself from cancer through positive affirmations and through speaking life into her body. She has a couple of great books. um, But the one that I would suggest to begin with is Mirror Work because this is you um, speaking to yourself in the mirror and start cultivating a relationship with yourself. And the first time I read this book, I could not look in, look at myself in the mirror, straight in the eyes without crying. Mm -hmm. And she has you say like, I love you. Like I'm learning to love you or something on the first day. I was hysterical. I couldn't do it. There's just so much pain there in loving me. Mm -hmm. And now I can look at myself in the mirror and be like, you're doing great. I love you. You are a gift. You are a miracle. So work on that. (laughs) And thank you for providing a tactical piece of information rather than just like the practice self-love, because if people aren't there, like, where do you start? But that's a great starting point. And I had not heard of that book. So now I'm very intrigued to read it. So Mirror Work by Louise Hay. Yes. I'll include that in the show notes too. Mm -hmm. 21 days to hear your life. So it's a 21 day process and it just takes like 10 minutes each morning. And she gives you journal prompts. She has you carry a mirror. She wants you to say, I love you in the mirror, like a hundred times a day. This is how you rewire your mind is through repetition. You know, you just reminded me of something too. I heard Mel Robbins speak in June and she shared with us. In fact, I think she's writing a book on this very topic and the science behind it, but high-fiving yourself in the mirror because high-fiving it's always a positive connotation. No one's ever high-fiving you because you did something bad, right? So you high-five yourself in the mirror, it like creates that that rewiring that mm-hmm. you're worthy of a high-five. So very that's that's an interesting parallel, I think. Mm-hmm. I love that. Well, this is um, so great. I could talk to you about this for hours. So- <laughs> Depending if people want more, maybe we can like do a a subsection of this around cultivating the self-love, like all of that, because, you know, primarily this is going to be women listening to the show. Yeah. And like you said, we've all been conditioned by society to be very critical, to not like ourselves, to have the superwoman syndrome, live in this, the shame based frequency, which I like, I'm going to ruminate on that for a while, that that's one level above the frequency of death for a while. I mean, that's just like, I can't even believe that. So this is so, so needed. So needed. Yeah, that was awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. So if people did not catch part one, which go back and listen to that, Kelsey's got an amazing story of entrepreneurship. Um, Where can people connect with you if they did not catch part one just yet? Yeah, you can connect with me on Instagram at Kelsey Padigos. And then my website is www.confidencecompany.org. And you can also find my podcast, The Confidence Company Podcast. And then also for all the listeners, I have a free gift for you when you text the, um, the word money to 619-304-5889. You get a free hypnosis recording to help rewire your mind to heal your relationship with money so you can start filling up your bank account in your life. (laughs) I love it. And if anyone listening to this is curious about hypnotherapy too, would highly suggest reaching out to Kelsey uh, and getting that ball rolling. It has helped me immensely in getting past some of these, these blocks. So thank you so much for coming on Kelsey and doing a part two super appreciate it. This was such a great conversation. And for all of you listening, thank you for listening to today's episode. If this added value to your life in some way or was thought provoking or helped you, I would love if you would leave a five-star review and share it with someone else who would benefit from hearing it. And you can help me get the word out about this show by taking a screenshot of the episode, sharing it to social media and tagging Kelsey and I. And I would love to connect with you on Instagram too. I want to hear how this show is helping you, what you'd like to hear more of, all of it. So don't hesitate to slide into the DMs anytime. You can find me at Corporate Dropout Official or Alacia Citro. That's A-L-E-S-S-I-A-C-I-T-R-O and two underscores. Until next time, remember, you're a badass, stay focused, stay hungry, and dare to drop out.